Karate for the warm welcome. So today, um, my, the name of my presentation is called Everyone's Doing It, uh, Independent Music in the 21st Century. Why do I call it that? Because, well, everyone is doing it. Every independent musician you could possibly imagine uh, is trying to get their name out there in one way, shape, or form or another here. So in 1962, this is what a garage band, generally speaking, looked like. Now again, it might be a little bit different, uh, but generally speaking, you've got a lot of Silvertone, Sears brand guitars, and you know, just people trying to you know, get together and make some music. Now, here in 2012, this is what a garage band looks like. Um, it's basically what this means is that the cost of entry into the music market has become increasingly lowered. Um, now you've got the ability to have a multi-track recording studio in your laptop. So, um, and what that basically translates over to, it used to be an event to make a record. You used to go into a studio, and you had a producer, and you were cutting to vinyl eventually, and it was a really big ordeal. Um, to, not to say that it isn't to this day, but it's become a lot easier for a lot of people to make music effic efficiently and cheaply. Uh, so any bro with a college dorm room and a laptop can make you know, the next Jack Johnson record, so to speak. Um, not to say that that's the only people making music, but it's a perfect example here. So what does that mean? It means that the market is being literally flooded with people trying to put their music out there in any way possible. Uh, it used to be that people would carry around their record collections in boxes like this, and, and many of these kind of boxes, all right? Uh, you know, if that was it, or crates and crates of vinyl. Um, so obviously that's changed in this day and age because now everybody carries around their music on something like this. And you know, this is actually kind of a dated version of the iPod for that matter. You know, you've got your iPhones now and everything's in the cloud. So what does that realistically mean for the music business? Well, it means that there's a lot less tangible goods to be had. Um, you know, you're seeing musicians that are still trying to make money and they're winding up with pocket change. Well, how does one go from just having pocket chains to taking yourself to the next level when you're not going to have a record label necessarily to be there to help you support that? It just doesn't work that way necessarily. So let's talk about a couple of different possibilities. The first one we're going to discuss is called Kickstarter. Anybody here familiar with Kickstarter? Um, it's not just for musicians. It's for really anybody who's got a noble cause and they're looking to, through the use of crowdsourcing, to raise money for that cause. And there are quite a bit of successful projects that have been fulfilled on Kickstarter. Here's an example. Amanda Palmer released a record. She's an independent musician. And uh, she raised about $1.2 million on Kickstarter in a little over 90 days um, from 24,883 fans. That's people that didn't even have the record yet, didn't even know what it was going to sound like. Um, so in 2011 alone, Kickstarter campaigns raised $119 million. But 41% of those campaigns failed. And with Kickstarter, if your campaign fails, you don't get that money. It goes back to your fans. Um, so let's talk about somebody who did something a little bit differently. This right here, his name is Jonathan Coulton. Uh, he's a house husband. And he made $500,000 on the internet in a year just selling his music. And let's talk a little bit about how he did that. Basically, Jonathan Coulton was a code monkey. He was a programmer who moved to New York 20 years ago um, to making a living as a musician and wound up getting a software job. So basically, he just was impassioned by being a coder and, and living that lifestyle. And he went ahead and on Slashdot posted a song he wrote called Code Monkey. And it became incredibly popular. So he set up a website. It's really hideous, so you can tell a programmer built it. Um, but it's functional. You know, Basically, you name your own price. He's giving away the songs for free and just asking for donations for the music. So basically, based off of how much you enjoy it, that's how much you pay for it. Uh, he also pioneered. Um, not necessarily pioneered, but is one of the proponents of selling your music for licensing in video games. He licensed a song of his called Still Alive to the Game Portal, which, as some of you may know, is one of the most popular online games around. Um, let's jump over to another model, the Radiohead model, which is so popular it now is called the Radiohead model. It's another name your own pricing scheme where a band that was formerly on a major label went ahead and became independent. They finished their deal and they decided they were going to distribute their next record themselves. So they basically said name your own price. The average price paid was about $6.19. It debuted at number one on the United Kingdom charts and it sold roughly $3 million in its first year. Out of that, $80 box sets were sold in 100,000 units. Um, then there's a band called OK Go. Maybe you guys have seen this video. It was made for about 20 bucks. Um, the lead singer's sister choreographed the video. Now, OK Go, they became very famous because of their videos. You can even see one here that was actually funded by Chevy and Ford. Um, I guess that's Ford, right? Um, so basically, the, or Chevy, sorry. Uh, the point being, they've gone ahead and taken the middleman out completely. Now their videos are being funded 
by different manufacturers, brands, and whatnot. The whole point here is to find your niche and live your niche. That's what these bands have done successfully. It doesn't mean that everybody's going to make a killing doing it, but at least you're doing what you believe in, and you have the tools to be able to take your medium and push it. So that's my speech.